so this guy's crazy. We just went through some super narrow stuff. You followed. <laughs> yeah, you somehow I did. managed to get in a nice piece of water. We ended up in in the wilderness. <laughs> Welcome to Wild Alaska. <laughs> We've spent the last week in Cochrane Bay in the northwest end of Prince William Sound. We don't know now what we'll find. We'd love to stay out here longer, there's so much to explore, but the show must go on. As mentioned in previous episodes, Alaska is the last frontier. A lot of the places here are only accessible by air or water. This week our plan is to check out the Matanuska Glacier, which is about 75 nautical miles north of us. This would normally only take us about a full day of sailing, but unfortunately we can't sail on land. So our plan is to hightail it back to Whittier, where we'll drop anchor and pick up a set of wheels. Tomorrow, we'll have an early start in order to meet up with a friend who has a unique plan to get us to the glacier. So we woke up super early this morning and I would like to tell you what we're going to do, but I'm still on my coffee. Yeah, a little bit early in jury this morning, but we are planning on meeting up with Nathan Blome and hopefully getting out of this rain, going jet boating. Here we go. To get out of Whittier, we have to go through a mountain. This is the longest tunnel in North America at four kilometers. It used to be train only, but later opened up to automotive traffic. As it's only wide enough for a single lane, each side of the tunnel opens up only once an hour. Luckily, we made it through on time. have arrived. Oh, my name's Nathan Bloom uh, from Anchorage, Alaska. I uh, build boats, build mini boats. Uh, that's my passion. I got into them is exploration. Getting access to some of the rivers in the valleys, the mountain areas that uh, you don't get access to without a helicopter or a plane. You get to see stuff no one else gets to see. Being able to jump out on a river and head out 100 miles into the back country is just something that drives me to live here in Alaska. You jump in sandbars and stuff? Yeah, sandbar. I like, you try, try not to beat them up too of much. Of course, but yeah. Eat. It happens. Once in a while, it's like, well, that's the only out. You know, come around a corner, there's a log, you just go for it. Yeah. You, know, you never know. Sometimes it's just easier just to jump it with speed. <laughs> it's it's part of the game. I mean, we didn't build these boats to uh, access lakes. You know, we built them to go see stuff that guys can't see. You're talking it up. Let's go do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boating part of Pete, we took him out, and uh, he's from Homer, Alaska. 
He owns Fine Line Jet Boats. He's built uh, quite a few of these little mini boats. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He knows how to read the water, understands the safety side of things, and to be able to push me and me to push him. He's an all-around great guy. This right here is bear spray. We got some bears out here, so you can never know what you run into on these adventures, so. You excited? Oh yeah, come on, of course I'm excited. And I'm fully prepared for everything. Honestly, one of the things I love about Olia is how absolutely fearless she is. I don't think I've seen her to get scared in the 12 years I've known her. That said, I don't think she really has any idea what she signed up for today. It's nothing like anything else that I've done in my life. Uh, I've been on motorcycles, I've been in regular ocean boats, off-road trucks, four-wheeler snowmobiles, and nothing has the same adrenaline rush. Alaskan waters present a lot more obstacles than the rest of the world. It's at that point of speed where they're just gliding over the water and uh, in like the slightest movement of the steering wheel, you can feel just the whole boat just slide from side to side. It's like butter. These boats can go through any water. It was one of the craziest days in our lives. It's like being on a roller coaster all day long. These things can fly. Was it hard to film? You bet. Sometimes my camera and I were both in the air, so keeping it stable wasn't even an option. Oh, and there was this one point where a giant wave covered Olya's entire boat. Including my camera, my rest in the piece. You, uh, you just got covered by an entire wave. And sorry for details, even my underwear fully wet right now. <laughs> yeah, that's more from excitement than anything. <laughs> but that was really crazy. Did you see it from the side? Yeah, you were, you were completely <laughs> engulfed by water. The goal behind Adam Boats is to get more boats on the water, uh, being able to be out with your friends and uh, challenge each other through different water sections or uh, high marks and uh, have that look over your shoulder like, yeah, we just pulled that off. <laughs> I'd say this is an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're flying going down, oh my gosh. That was yep. really crazy. That all was all and the expressions, right I think that's what kind of like sealed the deal for me. At the end of that little run, you look over at them and they got a high five for you and they're just like, I can't believe this, this is just insane. So that's, uh, that's what like makes it worthwhile for me. And we have incredible mountain ranges, we have incredible waterways you know, resources at our fingertips that the rest of the world just doesn't get to take part in. And uh, exploring that is seated in all of us. I think that it's not an option. You go outside no matter what to enjoy our lives up here. And that's why a lot of people live in Alaska. Finally get here. Yeah. 
You know how they say, it's not the destination, it's the journey? Well today I think we had our cake and ate it too. One for the books. So this guy's crazy. We just went through some super narrow stuff. You followed. <laughs> yeah, you somehow I did. managed to get in a nice piece of water. We ended up in in the wilderness. <laughs> in the woods. Story. One, two. Perfect. All the way from there to here. <laughs> I know that uh, my wife and daughter understand the, the ability of these boats and the danger that we can get into and the risk versus reward is that uh, I know they love me, I love those guys to death. Well, I feel like that. It does, you know, ground me in a lot of times that I uh, don't take those extra risks. They love that I have so much passion for the boats and uh, stand behind me 100%, so it wouldn't happen without them. Over the years, Oli and I have had our fair share of extreme adventures. In fact, we've practically built our careers around them. That said, Nathan and Pete really blew us out of the water here. They've built these boats in order to explore Alaska in a unique and exciting way. With each outing, they come back with memories that will last them a lifetime. It's been a great reminder that life is a lot more interesting when you don't know what's around the corner. And even more so when that corner is coming at you at a million miles an hour. Life back on board definitely seems a bit more tranquil than usual, but we're okay with that. It'll probably take a week or so to get the ringing out of our ears anyway. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you like this adventure and are keen to see more, please do us a favor and do the old like and subscribe thing. We have plenty of adventures lined up, so stay tuned.